Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to reach your educational goals and help you gain admission into undergrad and graduate health-related programs. And today we are talking about the best courses to take in college that will help you the most for medical school. Uh, don't get me started. But before we get started, you know what to do if you haven't done it already. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure you press the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. So I get this question a lot and excuse me guys, I'm, I'm a little chilly while I'm recording so I have on this hoodie. But I get this question a lot, okay? What classes do I need to take? Which ones will help me the most for medical school? What should I focus on? And I want to answer this question by breaking down courses into two categories, okay? Classes that are required, which are considered your prerequisite courses. And then also classes that are not required, are not prerequisites, but actually help you a lot for medical school content, okay? And there, here's a list of those classes right here. But first, let's talk about the required courses and then the courses that you should take before you sit for the MCAT. If you don't know what the MCAT is, I have several other videos that talk about it, but really briefly, it is the medical college admissions test that students have to take in order to get into medical school. So before you sit for that exam, you want to take these courses because these topics are tested on the MCAT. So first, obviously, if you are a biology major or a chemistry major, you will take a lot of these courses by default and you don't have to worry about it. But I have a lot of students who are interested in other things like education or accounting or history and math. And these courses aren't always included in their degree plan. So it's important to know which ones are required for medical school admissions, which ones will help you in uh, medical school later on, and then which ones you need to take before you actually sit for the MCAT. First, let's start with the prerequisites, which are biology one and two with the lab. Now, the lab is the actual hands-on portion where you will spend time in a lab doing biology experiments or chemistry experiments that you know depending on what the class is it's pretty much the practical part of what you're learning in the lecture okay so you want to take biology one and two with lab you also need to take chemistry one and two with lab as well as organic chemistry one and two with lab physics one and two with lab you also need to take two semesters of english most medical schools require two semesters of english um, and then maybe your degree plan will require two semesters of English anyway for you to graduate. So you have to take that. And then you also need to take a math. Typically it's calculus or biostatistics. Math is not a prerequisite at every medical school. There are some schools that kind of did away with it. There are some schools that still require it. I like to include it in the prerequisites because you never know which schools you want to apply to and you don't want to not qualify because you didn't take calculus, okay? And then last but not least, you have your behavioral sciences like sociology and psychology. Those courses that I just listed pretty much make up the prerequisites for medical school. Again, that means the classes that you have to take in order to be able to receive admission into a medical school. Now, do these classes actually help you for medical school? Yes and no. So <laughs> you're not gonna remember a whole lot of this material once you finish medical school, you become a doctor. Like who knows Newton's third law or whatever it is, if he has a third law. You see, I don't remember, but clearly I took physics. I did well on the MCAT and I'm a doctor, but I don't remember that basic science stuff. So it's not like I'm applying it in medical school or even now in residency. But what the emphasis is on the basic sciences is that you need to understand the basic science in order to understand medical science. So I use the, um, I use physics all the time as an example. I hate physics. I don't remember a lot of the concepts, but some things I do remember are actually key when it comes to medicine. So blood pressure control and things like that 
has a lot to do with physics. So that is why those classes are important. So yes, they help for medical school and sometimes they don't because you won't remember all that information anyway. But where you have to know the information is for the MCAT. So these classes are prerequisites, but then they're also the place where you build your ground knowledge in basic sciences that helps you for the MCAT. Another course that is not necessarily a prerequisite at every medical school, some medical schools acquire it, some don't, but is on the MCAT is biochem. I urge you to take biochemistry during your junior year before you take the MCAT, or at least the semester that you plan to take the MCAT, okay? So biochem is not always a prerequisite, but it's definitely on the MCAT, and you wanna have covered that material before you take the exam. So now let's talk about some of the courses that are not prerequisites, that are not necessarily tested on the MCAT, but are super helpful for medical school. Number one, I'm gonna say it over and over, I will scream it from the mountaintops, is anatomy and physiology. I was a biology major and only physiology was required, not anatomy. So I didn't take any anatomy courses, not in high school, not in college. I didn't take not one anatomy course until I got to medical school. I survived, but I would have been probably a lot more um, sufficient with my study time and made better grades in anatomy had I had a little bit of exposure before medical school. So I am an advocate for taking anatomy and physiology in college. And then some of the other ones are kind of hit and miss. I think microbiology is a huge one because it's a lot of information. It's a lot of memory type information. And if you start that earlier, then you'll be a lot better off later on in medical school. So I'd say microbiology is at the top of that list. Um, genetics is a huge one that I think is super helpful for uh, preparing you for medical school. Immunology, which uh, pretty much is the study of the immune system, super helpful for med school. Histology is very helpful, especially if you're not into uh, microscopic tissues. If that's not your strong point, then taking histology in college will definitely help you a lot for medical school because you have to learn how to recognize a cell or a dead tissue or a healthy tissue under a microscope, right? And that's not easy to do. So histology is definitely helpful in college. And a course that I actually took my junior and senior year in uh, college was called developmental biology. And it's pretty much the study of, well, the part I liked about it was how humans develop. So kind of like that embryology all the way up to fetus type thing. Uh, I really enjoyed that class and it definitely helped me a lot in medical school. And then the last course that I would uh, encourage you guys to take if you can is a medical terminology, just a general basic medical terminology course if your college offers it, just to get familiar with the terms, with the spelling, with the uh, you know prefix means, with the suffix means. And then the more you know, the more you understand, the easier it'll be for you to pick up on words and terms and keys and things like that in medical school. So remember to keep the courses separated. You have those that you have to take for either medical school that mission or MCAT preparation, and then you have those that you don't have to take but help you a lot for medical school. And this is really big for the students who are not science majors who won't already take these courses, okay? If you're a biology major, then you'll likely take a lot of these courses anyway, so you don't have to worry about building them into your schedule. If you are a finance major, then some of these courses will not be your degree plan, and they're not prerequisites, and they're not tested on the MCAT, so you may not take them, but they will help you a lot for medical school. I hope that was informative, you guys. If you have any questions or anything, please let me know in the comments. You guys have a great day.